Folks, day two of the Senate Judiciary Committee's confirmation hearings for Supreme Court Justice nominee Neil Gorsuch took a decidedly testy turn. Democrats on the committee grilled Gorsuch about his judicial independence from President Trump, as well as issues ranging from voting rights to workers' rights. But he sidestepped the questions, insisting that he would be impartial if confirmed to the Supreme Court. And I'm heartened uh, by the support I have received from people who recognize that there's no such thing as a Republican judge or a Democratic judge. We just have judges in this country. I'm just looking for something that would indicate that you would give a worker a fair shot. I've written 2,700, I've participated in 2,700 opinions over 10 and a half years. And if you want cases where I've ruled for the little guy as well as the big guy, there are plenty of them, Senator. How have your views of marriage equality changed, if at all, since the 2004 election? Senator, my personal views, if I were to begin speaking about my personal views on this subject, which every American has views on, would send a misleading signal to the American people that my it's personal... It's law. It is absolutely set a law. There are a whole bunch of questions that have been asked today that are really asking you to take your legal career and your legal ethics and set them aside and play politician on TV today. And that really isn't your job. And some of this questioning really hasn't been a fruitful uh, use of our time. It's well-meaning uh, to talk about the outcome objectives of a whole bunch of these cases. But I would submit that it's dead wrong. I want to give you just a couple of the questions we've heard earlier today. Uh, at different times, how can we have confidence that you won't be for the big guy? At another point, how can we know, how can we know that you feel for the little guy? This sounds noble. Um, but it's fundamentally a corruption of what the judge's job is. Now, interesting also, in yesterday's confirmation hearing, uh, he criticized anyone who criticizes federal judges. Last night, though, President Donald Trump, uh, then in a, in a clear shot at Gorsuch, said he's going to continue criticizing judges. All right, let's go to our panel right now. Dr. Jason Johnson, of course, uh, with Root also, uh, a professor. Uh, we also have Spencer Overton, of course, uh, who is with us, Joint Center for Political Economic Studies, Rena Shabara, Republican political strategist and consultant as well. So, folks, uh, basically, look at the testimony yesterday. Uh, it was somewhat of a love fest, Jason. I don't see uh, Democrats, especially those uh, red state Democrats, voting against him. No, right. they're, they're not going to. And their chance to do something about this was last year when President Obama could have just put Merrick Garland on the Supreme Court and he didn't do it. So they're going to scream and they're going to pout. I don't even think they're going to filibuster again. And Gorsuch's going to get on the Supreme Court. And he's going to support Donald Trump's travel ban. He's going to support everything else Donald Trump wants to do. And the fact that he's charismatic last night and nobody wants to ask him any tough questions is an example of the lack of backbone Democrats in the Senate have. The reality is no Democrat got a good dig on Gorsuch. I mean, nobody got that slam dunk hit and, and really nailed him. Um, so I think it's it's going to be a good one here. This is looking good for the Republicans. One market difference, though, that there was no not much mention of Trump, not much saying that, hey, Trump, great job nominating this guy. I think he's going to be better for the Republican Party than people think. Of course, he's a fill-in for Scalia. But generally, this guy is widely accepted across a number of people in the Republican Party. And, and as we know, there are many factions in the party, but people like him. So I think Democrats are going to have a hard time. Gorsuch is smooth. You know, he is going to end up being another Scalia uh, here or Thomas. Uh, what's amazing to me, Roland, is the lack of discipline in terms of Trump. Like, Gorsuch hits it out of the park. Just, you know, be silent, be quiet, sit back, let it happen, let the process happen, as opposed to having to reply to everything, to respond to everything. Amazing. Uh, one of the things that also jumps out at me uh, when you look at that hearing there, uh, Jason's point, I mean, it was, like I say, being a, being a love fest. Uh, and, and he was very folksy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, that was performance art as opposed to was the substance. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm sure Hitler gave out Halloween candy, right? But it doesn't mean that he was a nice guy. And at the end of the day, look, you have to look. I, I think the issue is the Democrats 
aren't making enough of a fight, even though they know they don't have the numbers, they're not making a big enough fight of this. They're getting calls from their constituents saying, I want you to drag this man over everything. I thought that yesterday, one of the most key questions was when Al Franken was saying, hey, where are your stances on gay marriage? Seeing so you were working in Ohio in 2004 when they had an anti gay, and he danced around it, he did a soft shuffle, and he backpedaled in the running man and everything else like that. That's the kind of thing that I think Democrats should focus on more policy, not just personnel. Rena, real quick. One thing that stuck out to me was that he was asked if Trump ever asked him to overturn Roe v. Wade. And he said, no, I would have walked out of the room if Trump asked me that. And I think that's a really good thing. Yeah, but he also said it's settled, but I guarantee you, <laughs> if, that, if that comes back up, settle goes out of the that window. Whole time. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man was shot and killed by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. We will keep focus on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at seven on TV One.